Good evening, let us review some most important EKGs today. EKG is mainly denoted by five important waves, P, Q, R, and S, and T. P wave represents atrial depolarization. QRS represents ventricular depolarization. And T wave represents ventricular repolarization. You can see P wave comes first, then it is followed by Q wave. Q wave is the negative deflection that follows P wave. And uh, sometimes we do not see Q wave. Sometimes you see it and uh, in many instances it might be pathology. Then R wave is the positive deflection that comes after Q. Then S wave is the negative deflection that comes after R. And you can also see the T wave that comes at the last. U wave, you do not usually see it on EKG. Now let us see some of the intervals. These are important because they change in various diseases. For example, PR interval changes in heart degree, heart blocks. And uh, RR interval changes in bradycardia and uh, tachycardia. So RR interval is the interval between two R waves. PR interval is the interval between P and R. ST segment is the linear interval between the at the end of S wave and the beginning of the T wave, whereas ST's interval is the interval between the, the end of S and the end of T. QT interval is the interval between Q and the end of T. And um, QRS, you can see that. That is the interval between Q and S. Now let us uh, review some of the most important uh, EKGs. Here you can uh, see a big P wave. This is very common in uh, right atrial enlargement. Because atria is big, then P wave will be big. And also now you can see left atrial enlargement. In left atrial enlargement, you can see notched P wave or M shaped P wave. You can see here a notched, a M shaped P wave, especially in the uh, in the upper EKG. This is characteristic of uh, left atrial enlargement. And then let us see left ventricular hypertrophy. Left ventricular hypertrophy, you can see big. R and S waves. In fact, if you combine S and R, it will be more than 35 millimeters. So whenever you see big S and R waves, you should suspect left ventricular hypertrophy. And now you can see here a ST segment elevation in 2, 3 and uh, ABF. This is characteristic of uh, inferior myocardial infarction. 2-3 AVF will have ST segment elevation and uh, depression in uh, V2, V3, V4. That is reciprocal changes. Similarly, in um, you can see here acute anterior MI. It is characterized by ST segment elevation, especially in V2 and V3. You can see ST segment elevation. This is acute anterior MI. And if you see the ST elevation in uh, lateral leads like... Uh, as you can see here in V4, V5, V6, it is uh, acute anterolateral infection. So in acute anterolateral infection, you will see ST segment elevation in a lateral leads like V4, V5, V6. Now let us see abnormalities in electrolyte uh, disturbances. First, hyperkalemia. In hyperkalemia, you will see big tan shaped T waves. You can see here very clearly. T wave is as big as the QRS complex. This is very characteristic of hyperkalemia, that is high potassium level in the blood. When you come to hypokalemia, that is low calcium level in the blood, you can see U waves. As you can see here, QRS complex is followed by T wave, then that is followed by U wave. U wave is uh, simply the wave that follows T wave. Let me show you 
actually a clearer U wave. Just look at this EKG. In this EKG you see U wave. It comes after the T. This is characteristic of hypokalemia that is low potassium level less than 3.5 milliequivalents per liter. Now let us see another calcium abnormalities. Whenever calcium increases in the blood, cardiac contraction increases and there will be narrow QRS complexes. That means the ventricles, they contract very fast. You can see here, very narrow, very, very narrow, like sharp lines. This is characteristic of hypercalcemia, high calcium level. On hypocalcemia, you will see the reverse, increased complex levels. Now, in this EKG, you will see increased PR intervals. You can observe how PR interval is more than 0 0.2 milliseconds. Normal PR interval is between 0 0.12 to 0 0.2. So, this is increased PR interval that is characteristic of first degree AV block. Now, this is a second degree Mobig type 1. In this, PR interval increases, ultimately P wave is dropped. This is Mobig type 1. And now in this you can see this is a third degree block. Both atria and ventricles they contract differently. This is third degree AV block. And now let us go to see some other. This is pericarditis. In pericarditis you see uh, a diffuse ST segment elevation. You can see ST segment elevation in almost all leads and the voltage is also less. So this is characteristic of uh, pericarditis when fluid accumulates around the heart. Now you can see this one, this is uh, fibrillation, atrial fibrillation, atria there is uh, irregularly irregular rhythm, atria are contracting very irregularly this is atrial fibrillation. In atrial fibrillation, the atria just contract irregularly and that needs to be treated with medications like diltiazem. Similarly, now you can see atrial flutter. Atrial flutter is characteristically sawtooth shaped and atrial rate varies between 250 and 350. And the sawtooth shaped, whenever you see that sawtooth shaped, you should think of atrial flutter. Atrial flutter and the atrial fibrillation are, are actually treated in the same way, but identifying them is important. Now, let us see premature ventricular contractions. Here, the third and seventh beats, they are premature ventricular contractions. That means uh, ventricles are contracting before their time. And uh, premature ventricular contractions, they may be single or double, that is uh, bigemini or trigemini when there are three premature ventricular contractions. Now, this is ventricular tachycardia. In ventricular tachycardia, you see premature pre PVCs, that is uh, premature ventricular contractions, three or more, and the QRS complex will be very wide. Whenever you see this, you should think of ventricular tachycardia. That is, a, that is that needs to be treated if it is uh, otherwise it becomes serious. In fact, you can see in this EKG ventricular fibrillation. This is a medical emergency. So this needs to be treated, and uh, the main treatment is uh, defibrillation. So ventricular, defibril uh, ventricular fibrillation is ventricles are not producing any input. Thank you. I hope you enjoy these EKGs.